the Teach Yourself series from Via Graphics, designed to teach you to use your computer the fast and easy way. I'm Leslie Thomas along with Virgil Ritchie. Access can help us organize, find, and present information in an efficient manner. With Access's friendly database interface, we can quickly create and edit our information. Easy to use buttons allow us to rapidly access and use data. We place the learning disk in the proper drive. Ours is A. Now we open My Computer. Then we open the hard drive. Ours is C. First, we need to create a folder. We choose File, then we highlight New, then select Folder, and see the new folder. With the insertion point blinking in the new folder text, we type Via Graphics Introduction Tutorial. We deselect the text by pressing the Enter key. Next, we move the C Group window and display the My Computer window. In this window, we double-click the floppy drive icon. Now we see our files. Let's copy all of our files into the Introduction folder. We choose Edit, then select All. With all of our files highlighted, we choose Edit, then Copy. Now we move to the Via Graphics folder. We place the pointer on this folder and click the right mouse button. We see its shortcut menu. Then we choose the Paste command. Windows 95 copies our files into this folder. We close all windows and return to the desktop. When you finish this tutorial, simply delete the files and the Via Graphics folder. We made a typical installation of Access 7. Before we open Access, let's take a moment and explain some terms. A database is any organized collection of information. For example, address or telephone books are databases. Access is a relational database. This means it can store and find information by connections you define. To hold information, Access uses tables. Each table consists of rows and columns. For instance, a telephone book lists data by name, address, and telephone number. An access table uses a similar arrangement also. Access places records into the rows of a table. Access places our table categories, such as names or addresses, in columns called fields. Now let's start Access and view a sample database. We highlight Programs, then Microsoft Access. We click it and see the Access Splash screen, then the Access Main Window. Now let's open an existing database, an Access Sample. With the radio button selected in front of the Open an Existing Database option, we choose OK. And see the open box. With the shortcut to Northwind highlighted, we choose the Open button. We close the Northwind screen by choosing OK and see the Northwind database window. Let's discuss the Microsoft Access window. At the top of the window, we see the title bar. Directly below it, we see the menu bar. We see a few more items in the menu bar since we opened our Northwind database. Below the menu bar is the toolbar. We can use the toolbar as a shortcut for many menu options and commands. Before we opened our database, Access dimmed most of the toolbar buttons. Now, 
we see many active usable buttons. Let's use Microsoft's tooltips feature and see a thumbnail description of a toolbar button. We place the pointer on the seventh button from the right. This button is pushed in and lighter in color than the other buttons because it's active. We see the list tooltip. In the center of the window, we see the database window containing the North Wind database. At the bottom of the window, we see the status bar. Our pointer is still on the list button. On the left side of the status bar, we see a more complete description of our button. On the right side of the status bar, we see several boxes which display status messages. Currently, we see num, signifying our numerical lock is enabled. Let's press the caps lock key, and we see caps displayed in one of the boxes. We disable the caps lock key by pressing it again, and access removes the status message. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. Remember, Access's menus and toolbars change to display commands and options that apply to the active window. We can use and display up to 19 different Access toolbars. Let's see which toolbar we're viewing now. At the toolbar, we place the pointer on any blank area. In the left corner of the status bar, we see Database, the Database Toolbar. Let's use the toolbar button and change the view in the database window. We choose the large icons button. It's the ninth one from the right. And we see the change. Let's examine the database window. At its top, we see six object tabs. Access defines an object as something you can select and manipulate as a unit. You can use the object tabs to access every object in your database. Simply choose the specific object by selecting the proper tab. With the Table tab selected, let's open the Employees table. We highlight the Employees icon, then choose the Open button. We see our table displayed in the Datasheet view. At the bottom of the table window, we see the Navigation Controls. We see nine records in this table, with the highlight on the first record. Now let's choose the Navigation Controls right arrow, and we see the highlight move to the second record. We choose the right arrow again and see the highlight move to the third record. Now we move to the last record by choosing the right arrow with the line in front of it. We move to the eighth record by choosing the left arrow. Now we move to the first record by choosing the left arrow with the line in front of it. We can add a record to the table by selecting this button. We view the rest of the fields by clicking the right arrow horizontal scroll bar. We see a photo field in this table and a bitmap image listed. We can create and place a picture in a form by using Microsoft Paint or any application that creates a BMP or bitmap file. Let's view the bitmap image in the form view. We close this table by clicking the X button in its upper right corner. Let's view the information in the employee table in the form field. We choose the forms tab. Let's open the employee's form another way. We place the pointer on this icon. We double click and see the employee's form. When we viewed the employee table in the datasheet view, we saw all of the records simultaneously. In the form view, we see only one record at a time. Now we see the bitmap image as the employee's picture. Also, we see a button with personal info on it at the bottom of the page. We select it and see this employee's address, city, state, and other information. The personal info button now says company info on it. We select it and see the company info. Now let's move to the next record. At the navigation controls, we select the right arrow button. We close the employee's form window by clicking the X in the upper right corner. Now let's examine the rest of the object tabs. We select the queries tab. 
When we want to ask questions about the information stored in our tables, we use a query. The way we design a query tells Access exactly what data to retrieve. Let's view a query. We open the category sales for 1994 by double clicking its icon. We see the category sales grouped alphabetically and the category sales grouped and totaled. Now we close the query and return to the database window. When we want to organize, display, and format information, we create a report. We can use a report and group our data. We can display subtotals and grand totals also. Let's view a report in the Northwind database. We choose the Reports tab. Then we double-click the catalog icon and see the report. By default, we're in the print preview mode, and we're seeing our report in 100% zoom. In other words, we are seeing our report the same size as the printed size. Let's move to the third page by clicking the right arrow on the navigation controls twice. We use the horizontal and vertical scroll bars and center the page. We see a different menu and toolbar. Each button has its own tooltip also. Let's move the pointer to the center of the report window. We see the pointer change into a magnifying glass. It has a minus sign on it also. Let's view the entire third page. We click the mouse and see the fit to window zoom. Also, we see a plus sign in the magnifying glass now. Let's zoom to the 200% size. We display the zoom control list and select 200%. We use the scroll bars and display some text. We return to the fit in window zoom by placing the pointer in the center of the window, then clicking the mouse. Now we close the report window and return to the database window. When we want to automate a common task, such as printing a weekly report or opening a form, we can create a macro. A macro is a series of keystrokes or actions we record, then play back. We can create custom macros for our database then store them in the database. Let's take a look at a macro in the North Wind database. We choose the Macros tab. Let's try running a macro. We highlight suppliers. Then we choose the Run button. Nothing happened because we must run this macro from its open form or report. Let's open the Suppliers form. We choose the Forms tab. Now we double click the supplier's icon and see the form. We see the Add Products button in the lower right corner of the form. Now we close the form. An Access module is a collection of one or more Access basic features. For example, we use an Access module and create procedures in Access's language, Access Basic. We can customize and extend our database also. With a collection of declarations, statements, and procedures, we can store them together as a unit or module. We select the Modules tab. The Utility Functions module contains functions you can use in expressions on your forms and reports. Let's close the Northwind database. We click the X in the upper right corner. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. Let's review what we have covered in this chapter. We opened a sample database. We discussed parts of the access window. Then we changed the database window view. We explained and used the navigation controls. Next, we opened a form, then viewed a query. We displayed a report. Finally, we explained macros and modules. With Access, we have the option of creating a blank database or creating one using the database wizard. Let's create one of each.
for our first database, we'll use the wizard and create a table for a videotape collection. At the access window, we choose the new database button. It's the first one from the left. We choose the databases tab. Then we scroll the database templates until we see the video collection icon. We select it, then choose OK. At the File New Database window, we need to name our database. Also, we want to save it in our Via Graphics Introduction Tutorial folder. So let's change this folder now. We display the Save In list. We select C. Now we double click the Via Graphics Introduction Tutorial folder. With this folder listed in the Save In line, we move to the File Name line. We highlight the default name text by dragging, then releasing the mouse. We type, My Videotape Collection. We choose the Create button, and Access adds the .mdb extension for us. We see our database and the database wizard. We see the default information our database will store. We choose the Next button. We see the five default tables the database wizard will create for us. Let's include sample data in our tables. We click the box in front of this option. Then we choose Next. We can select one of ten screen displays. We preview each style by clicking on it. We choose International and see a preview of the screen. Some screen styles use more memory than others. If you have a slow redraw time in the preview, you may want to choose a plain style. We choose Next. We can use one of six report styles. Again, we preview any style by clicking on it. We choose Casual. We select Next. Although we named our database file, we can title the database. We type in all capital letters, My Video Collection. If you have a pre-designed bitmap picture, you can include it in your database by clicking the box in front of the Yes option. Then choose the picture option and open the bitmap file. For this exercise, we won't include a picture. Now we choose the next button. We're finished with the database wizard. With the yes, start the database option checked, we choose the finish button. We see the database wizard create the database and the tables. We see the My Video Collection Database switchboard. Let's look at our videotapes. We click the first button and see the screen style we selected, along with the program name, type, and actors. We click the Program Information button and see the name, type, recording date, length, and counter positioning. We close the video programs window and return to the video tapes window. We close this window and return to the switchboard. Let's customize our switchboard. We choose the fourth button and see the three switchboards we can edit. With main switchboard highlighted, we choose Edit and see the Edit Switchboard page box. Let's change the Enter or Look at Videotapes to Videotape Maintenance. With the first item highlighted, we choose Edit and see the Edit Switchboard item box. Now we type in all capital letters Videotape Maintenance. We type this in the text line. We press Enter and return to the Edit Switchboard page box. Now we choose the Close button twice and return to the switchboard 
and see the change. Now let's close this database. We choose the exit this database button. It's the last one. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. Access makes it easy to create a customized database for our specific home or business needs. Let's create a blank database, then create some tables. We choose the new database icon. It's the first one from the left. We highlight the blank database icon, then choose OK. At the File New Database window, we see our Via Graphics Introduction folder in the Save In line. In the File Name line, we type in all capital letters, Our Business Database. You can use up to 32 characters, including spaces, for your file name. We press Enter and see our database window with the Tables tab selected. We choose the New button and see the New Table box. We can create our table five different ways. At this time, we see the first option, Data Sheet View, highlighted. We highlight the second option by pressing the down arrow cursor key. And we see a thumbnail explanation to the left of the list. Now we highlight Table Wizard. We can use Access as Table Wizards for step-by-step -step help. We highlight the Import Table Wizard. We can use this wizard and import data and objects from external files. Now we highlight the link table wizard. If you have tables in another database you want to use in this database, you can use the link table wizard and place them in your active database. Let's use the table wizard. We highlight it. Then we choose OK and see the table wizard dialog box. Access offers over 120 sample tables for personal or business use, and each have their relevant fields. We want to create a table for a business, the default. We can choose from one of 77 selections. We highlight employees and see the fields we can use in the sample fields list. We can use all or any of these predefined fields. Let's use a few of them. We highlight employee ID. Then we select the right arrow and see this field move to the fields in my new table list. We highlight last name, then choose the right arrow. Let's add the first name, address, city, state, postal code, home phone, and date hired fields by selecting each then choosing the right arrow button. We're finished here, so we choose the Finish button. Access creates and displays our employees table in the data sheet view. Keep in mind, we viewed an employees table in the North Wind database. Since the tables are in separate databases, we can do this. However, Access does not permit duplicate table names in the same database. We can view or modify our table structure in the Design View. We move to Design View by selecting the Design View button. It's the first one from the left. Now we see three columns, Field Name, Data Type, and Description. With the highlight on the first field employee ID, we see its field properties in the lower half of the window. We can use field properties to specify how we want to store, handle, and display data. We can accept or change these default values. We see yes in the indexed line. Let's highlight the last name field by pressing the down arrow cursor key. And we see the field properties change. 
in the index line, we see no. You may pause the tape now. If we index a field, we can increase the speed of our data access because access orders the values. Again, we highlight the employee ID field. We see a key to the left of the employee ID field, designating it as a primary key field. Also, we see no duplicates on the index line. To create a unique identifier of each record, we create a primary property key or primary key. Access creates an index on this primary key field, then uses it to quickly find records and create table joins. A primary key is the only way Access can use this table in a relationship with another table. Although you can create a table without a primary key, your table will stand alone in your database. Our employee ID field fits the criteria for a primary key, and Access designed it as one. If we want a primary key in our table, but none of our fields fit the criteria, we can have Access create a primary key for us. Use the auto number field data type. Remember, we cannot duplicate values in a primary key field. Access displays any information we type in the description column in the lower left corner of the status bar. Let's enter some text for the employee ID field. We press tab twice. With the insertion point blinking in the first row of the description line, we type in all capital letters, automatically entered. Most of our fields are the text data type. We'll discuss their properties a little later. We scroll the field name list and see the date hired field name. Let's view its field properties. By default, we see our format is short date. Let's change it. We place the insertion point in the center of the format line. We click and see a down arrow at the end of the format line. We select the down arrow and see our format choices. We choose medium date. You can use the input mask line to specify where and what kind of information a user can enter in this field. Also, you can define the number of characters placed in this field. For this exercise, we accept the default mask. If you place a default value in this line, Access will display this value in every record of this table. Any user can edit this value. You can limit your data to a value that meets a certain requirement by using the validation rule and validation text lines. We want access to remind us to fill a field, so let's change the required line from no to yes. We point and click in the middle of this line. We display the drop-down list, and we select yes. Remember, if you need help, access help is just a keystroke away. Let's display help for our table design view. We press the F1 key and we see the field name property help box. We can use the green hypertext to display more information about a subject. Now we place the pointer on the green table design view text. When we see the insertion point change into a hand, we click and see a design view tables information box. We return to the help window by pressing the escape key. Now we close the help window by clicking the X in the upper right corner. Use the Help button on the toolbar to define a specific object. Let's enter some information in our table. We move to the Datasheet view by clicking the first button from the left. We answer Yes to the Save Changes prompt. And we see our table in the Datasheet view. On the status bar, we see the automatically entered text we typed in the description field. We can use the tab and shift plus tab keys or the cursor arrow key to move the highlight around the table. We'll enter some information for the first employee. We press tab and move to the last name field. We type Johnson tab Bob tab 123 Maple Street 
tab, Los Angeles, tab, CA, tab, 90052, and tab. With our insertion point in the home phone field, we type 213-555-1111. With Access's default input mask, we see the parentheses automatically placed around the area code. Also, Access displays hyphens in their proper positions. We press Tab and move to the Date Hired field. We type 010695. Access automatically adds the front slash. We move to the first field of the second record by pressing Tab. Let's use the cursor arrow keys and move to the date hired field in the first record. We see the format change to the medium date format. We press tab and move to the second record. We'll enter information for three more employees now. We press tab, type Keller, tab, Sam, 234 Oak Drive, tab, Long Beach, tab, CA, tab, 90801, tab, 213-555-2222, tab, 10-1594, then we tab to the next record, and tab, then we type Donner, tab, Tracy, tab, 345 Dogwood Boulevard, Tab, Oxnard, Tab, CA, 93030, Tab, 805-555-3333, Tab, 2-1595. We tab to the next record and type, Smith, Tab, Chris, Tab, 456 Hickory Lane, Tab, Los Angeles, Tab, CA, Tab, 90052, Tab, 213-555-4444. Earlier, we changed the required line property in the table design view for the date hired field from no to yes. Let's try it. With the date hired field blank, we press Tab, and see a field can't contain a null value message box. We choose OK and close the box. With the insertion point still in the date hired field, we type a date. We're finished entering our information. Let's close the table by clicking the X in the upper right corner. Access automatically saves our new entries. You may pause the tape now. Let's create a table that displays our employees' social security numbers. With the Tables tab selected, we choose the New button. At the New Table box, we highlight Design View. We choose OK, and we see Table 1. We want the same field information for the employee ID and last name fields from our employees' table in this table. We can enter the duplicate field information, but let's copy it from the employee's table. First, we minimize the Table 1 window by clicking the line in the upper right corner. With the employee's table highlighted, we select the Design button. Next, we place the pointer in the first row of the row indicator. It's the gray block just to the left of the field name. When we see the cursor change into a right arrow, we drag the mouse to the second row. With both rows highlighted, we release the mouse. Now we select the Copy button on the toolbar. It's the seventh one from the left. With the data from our highlighted rows in the clipboard, we could close the Employees table now. However, we plan to use it in a moment, so let's minimize it. We restore Table 1 by clicking the first button in the right corner. With the insertion point in the first row, we select the Paste button. It's the eighth one from the left. 
we see our two field names and their field properties. Now we can add another field. Access considers a valid field name to be up to 64 characters long. It can include any combination of letters, numbers, spaces, and special characters. We cannot, however, use periods, exclamation marks, brackets, leading spaces, or control characters, which are ASCII values 00 to 31. We place the insertion point in the third row of the first column. We type SS number. We press tab and move to the data type column. We display the drop-down list and see the different data types plus the lookup wizard. Earlier we briefly discussed the auto number and date time data types. When we create a table field, we can choose from one of eight data types. Also we can use the lookup wizard to display a list of values we can select from. Here's a list of Access's data types, a thumbnail description of what value each field stores and its maximum size. Text includes alphanumeric characters up to 255 bytes. Memo includes alphanumeric characters up to 64,000 bytes. Number includes numeric values 1, 2, or 8 bytes. Date time includes dates and times, 8 bytes. Currency includes monetary values, 8 bytes. Auto number includes default increment value. Yes, no includes Boolean values, 1 byte. OLA includes object binary data, up to 1 gigabyte. Keep in mind, if we are creating a field for phone numbers, part numbers, or numbers we won't use for mathematical calculations, Access recommends we select the text, not the number data type. We select text for the Social Security number data type. We're finished entering fields for this table. However, we need to define a primary key. Let's use our employee ID field. We highlight the first row by pointing and clicking on the first row indicator. Now we choose the Set Primary Key button on the toolbar. It's the ninth one from the right. And we see the key in the row indicator. Let's move to the Table View. We select the Table View button. It's the first one from the left. We answer Yes at the Save Table prompt. Now at the Save As dialog box, we see Table 1 in the Table Name line. Now we type in all capital letters, Social Security Numbers. We press Enter and see the Table View. Now we can enter our information. The Employee ID and last name information we need is in the Employees table. Let's copy and paste our data. First, we restore the employees table. Next, we move to the table view by clicking the first button from the left. And we see our table information. With the highlight in the first row of the employee ID field, we click the employee ID label. We press and hold the shift key. Now we click the last name label. Then we release the shift key. Now, we select the Copy button. It's the seventh one from the left. We activate the Social Security Numbers table. With the highlight in the first row of the Employee ID field, we choose Edit from the menu bar. Then the Paste Append command. We see the Paste Confirm message box, and we select Yes, and see our four records from the Employees table. We remove the highlight by pointing and clicking in any row. Now we'll enter our employee's social security numbers. Now we're finished entering information, so we close the Social Security table. 
and we remove the highlight in the employees table. For easier viewing, we can easily adjust the column width of any table. Let's manually adjust the column. We display the state field by clicking the right arrow on the horizontal scroll bar twice. Now we move, not drag, the pointer to the line dividing the state and postal code fields. When we see the pointer change into a double-headed arrow, we drag the mouse to the left. When properly sized, we release the mouse. Remember, the lines between the field labels control the size of the left side column. Let's automatically adjust the column for the best fit. We use the horizontal scroll bar and display the date hired field. Now we place the insertion point in any row of this field by pointing and clicking. Now we choose format from the menu bar, then column width. And we choose the best fit button and access automatically adjusted. Let's size our table and remove the blank areas. We place the pointer on the bottom edge of the employee's window. When we see the pointer change into a double-headed arrow, we drag the mouse and the line up. When we are just below the last name row, we release the mouse. We repeat the steps with the right side of the table. It's easy to sort your table records. Let's display our last name records in the descending order. We place the pointer in the last name column. Then we click the right mouse button and see the shortcut menu. We choose Sort Ascending and see the change. Let's filter our records. We want to display only those employees who live in the city of Los Angeles. We move to the city field. Then we place the pointer on a field with Los Angeles in it. Then we click the right mouse button and we see the shortcut menu. We choose Filter by Selection. We see only those two employees who live in our selected city. Let's display all of our records again in their employee ID order. We place the pointer on any field in our table. Then we click the right mouse button and we once again see the shortcut menu. We choose Remove Filter Sort. Now we close the employees table. We want to save our table layout changes such as a column width, so we answer yes to the prompt. And we return to the database window and we see our two tables. Let's review what we covered in this chapter. We used the database wizard and created a database with several tables and forms. We used the table wizard and created a table, then modified our table structure in the design view. We changed a field format. We explained, then used help. We copied field information, then defined a primary key. We copied records from one table to another. We adjusted a column width, then sized the table window. We sorted our records, then filtered them. Finally, we removed our filter and sort. How we design a query tells Access exactly what data we want to retrieve. Let's design a query with the employees table. If you would like to try the following exercises but don't want to create the sample business database, you can open a copy of it. The Viagraphics sample database in the Viagraphics introduction folder is a duplicate of the sample business database to this point in the tutorial. With the employees table highlighted in the database window, we select the queries tab. Now we choose the new button and see the new query box. We can use Design View and create a query from scratch, or use the simple Query Wizard. You can create a query in a spreadsheet-like format with the Crosstab Query Wizard. If one of your tables contains many field duplicates, use the Find Duplicates Query Wizard to organize your information. Sometimes you need to view records in one table that are not related to records in another table. You can use the Find Unmatched Query Wizard for this task.
we want to create a crosstab query. So we highlight crosstab query wizard. We choose OK and see a sample representation of the finished query at the bottom of the box. We want to create a query with the employees table. With this table highlighted, we choose the next button. In our query, we want to display which employee lives in which city. So let's move the city field to the selected fields list. We highlight city. Then click the right arrow button. Now we choose next. Here we need to decide the value or values we want as column headings. We want to see the employee's last names, so we highlight last name. We see our sample change. We select next. We don't want to calculate a summary for each row, so we remove the check mark in front of the yes include row sums option. We can select from nine different functions. Let's count our records, so we select the count function and choose next. Let's name our query. In the name line, we type in all capital letters, employees, cities. We want to view the query now. With this option selected, we choose the finish button. We see our query along with the three cities our employees live in. We see that two of them live in Los Angeles, with one in Long Beach and Oxnard. We close the query and return to the database window. Let's create another query from scratch. We want to list all the employees hired before January of 1995. With the Query tab selected, we choose New. With Design View highlighted, we choose OK and see the Query Design View. The Show Table box displays all of the tables we can use. With Employees highlighted, we choose the Add button. We're finished with the Show Table box, so we close it. We see all of our employees' table fields in a list. We see the Employee ID field displayed in bold, as it is a primary key field. Let's place the Employee ID field into our query. We highlight it. Now we drag the mouse and the box to the first column of the field row. Then we release the mouse and see the field. At this time, we can change the field to another one. We display the field drop-down list. We see all of our employees' table fields. We want to use the employee ID field, so we close the list by pressing Escape. As we mentioned earlier, we can sort all of our fields in a query, and Access determines the sort order by the field position. For this exercise, we won't want to sort this field, but we do want to see it in a query. The check mark in the box in the show row confirms our fields display in our query. We can use the criteria row and place limits on our query. We'll use a criteria in a moment. Let's add the rest of the fields we want to see in our query. We return to the employees list at the top of the select query box. We place the pointer on the last name field. We drag the mouse and the field box to the first row of the second column. We complete the fields in our query by dragging the date hired field to the first row of the third column. Let's sort our employee names. We select the sort row in the last name column. We display the drop down list. We choose the ascending option. Now let's define our criteria. We move to the Date Hired column. We select the Criteria row. We type less than 01 front slash 95. We just entered a comparison operator. Access recognizes these comparison operators. Less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal, equal and not equal. We select the Run button. It has an exclamation mark on it. We see the two employees hired before January 1st, 1995. Also, we see our employee names in ascending order. Let's save our query. We close it and see the Save Changes message box. 
We answer yes to the prompt. At the Save As box, we type before January 1995 in the query name line. We press enter and return to the database window. And we see our query listed. Remember the data in a query changes if we update our table information. Let's query the information from two tables. Again we choose the new button. With design view highlighted we select OK. We see the query design view and the show table box. We want to use both tables, so let's select them. We highlight employees. Now we press and hold the shift key. Then click social security numbers. Then we release the shift key. Now we select the add button and see both tables and their fields in the select query window. We close the show table box. Access automatically joined our tables at each table's primary key field. We see a double-headed arrow signifying the join. We can view all of our table's fields by scrolling. We won't remove the join. When we need to create a query that uses more than one table, we may have to tell Access how to connect or join the information. Access represents joins by join lines. Joining tables increases the power and flexibility of our query. Remember, the primary key field of each table appears in bold lettering. With both of our tables joined, let's place our fields. We place the employee ID field from the employee's table to the first column of the field row by dragging, then releasing the mouse. We place the date hired field from the employee's table in the second column in the field row. Now we place the SS number field in the third column in the field row. Let's sort our information by the date hired field. We point and click in the sort row in the date hired column. Then we display the drop down list. Now we choose descending. We're finished creating the query. So we select the run button and see the query results. Let's close and save this query. We close this window and answer yes to the prompt. At the Save As box, we type in all capital letters, employee numbers. We press enter and see our new query in the database window. Let's review what we covered in this chapter. We used Query Wizard. Let's review what we covered in this chapter. We used Query Wizard and designed a cross-tab query with one table. We ran and saved the query. We listed comparison operators. We used the query design view and created another query. Finally, we created a query with two joined tables. When we want to organize and display our information in print, we create a report. An access report is similar to a form. However, we can present summary information or totals in a report and control the appearance of our data. Let's create an auto report from the employees table. With the employees table highlighted, we choose insert, then auto report. We see our auto report in print preview. We see our table's name in the left corner of the report. As we scroll down, we see the field labels and information from each record. Let's view the entire first page. We place the magnifying glass pointer in the center of the page, and then we click the mouse. You can use the zoom control in the toolbar to change the zoom also. Now we close the list by pressing escape. To print our report with the default settings, we can select the print button. It's the first one from the left. Now let's view the print settings. We choose file, then print. 
At the print box, we can print all or some of the pages with the print range section. If you want to save the report to your hard disk or floppy, select the box in front of the print to file option. If you have a large report, you can collate copies also. Collating usually prints faster. We see our printer type in the name box. By default, Access uses the printer driver we specified when we installed Windows and uses our default printer. If you installed more than one driver, you can easily change it. We display the name list and see the currently installed drivers for this system. Now, we close the list. Let's view our print properties for our default printer. We choose the Properties button. We don't want to print the report at this time, so we select Cancel twice and return to the preview. We choose the Close button and return to the Report Design view. Let's save the report. We close the report design window. Then we answer yes to the save prompt. At the save as box, we type in all capital letters, employees. We press enter and return to the database window. Now let's close access. We double click the control icon in the upper left corner and return to the desktop. Let's review what we've covered in this chapter. We created an auto report. We used the zoom feature and the navigation controls. We explained report printing. Finally, we saved our report. That review concludes this Introduction to Access for Windows 95 Version 7. We've covered a lot of information in this tutorial. If you feel the need to review, simply rewind the tape and watch that section again until you are comfortable with the material. We at Via Graphics would like to thank you for choosing our company for your computer training needs. Remember, if you plan to learn Access for Windows 95 or any other computer software, there is no better way than through video training with Via Graphics.